Chemistry lecture number 21, energy levels, energy sublevels, orbitals, and the Pauli exclusion principle. In the Bohr model of the atom, electrons circle the nucleus in the same way that planets orbit around the sun. Uh, negative electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus, and consequently it takes energy to move an electron away from the nucleus to an outer circle. All right, so Rutherford came up with his model of the atom where the protons occupied the center of the nucleus, and he said the electrons were very far away. And then Bohr further developed this model of the atom by saying that the electrons uh, orbit the nucleus. Now, the electrons with a negative charge are going to be attracted to uh, the positive charge of the nucleus. Remember, opposite charges attract. And if I want to pull uh, an electron away from the nucleus, it's going to take energy. So these circles are sometimes referred to as energy levels. And the further I want to pull it away from the nucleus, the more energy it takes. So the more outermost the uh, circle, the higher energy the electron has. So let's sort of reiterate that. So the circles where the electrons orbit are referred to as energy levels or shells. Um, electrons in the outermost circles have higher energy since it requires more effort to pull the electron a greater distance from the nucleus. And the energy levels are numbered 1, 2, and 3, etc. Uh, energy levels are called principal quantum numbers. And the letter N is used to represent the energy level. Uh, the smaller the number, the closer the energy level is to the nucleus. And the energy level that is closest to the nucleus has a value of N equals 1. All right, so let's see a picture of what these uh, words mean. All right, so each of these black bands represent energy levels. Uh, the electrons are inside the energy levels orbiting the nucleus. This circle right here is the closest circle, so it has an energy level equal to 1, and then the second outermost is n equals 2, and so on. This red dot here is the nucleus. K, L, M, and N are sometimes used instead of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's, I think, used more in college or... Uh, maybe, yeah, higher level chemistry, but uh, for high school level, usually we just refer to the energy levels as 1, 2, 3, and 4 instead of K, L, M, and N. And as you go further and further away from the nucleus, the energy uh, of the uh, energy level increases, so the uh, electron is said to have higher energy. Now, each energy level can only hold a certain number of electrons. The first electron can hold, uh, or first energy level can only hold two electrons. The second energy level can hold only eight. And the third energy level can only hold 18 electrons. Let me show you a picture of that. Okay, so here's our picture of the atom. Here's the nucleus right here. Each of these rings represent energy levels where the electrons are uh, orbiting. So in this first circle right here, notice there are only two electrons. And then in this second circle, you have two, four, six, eight electrons. And then in this outermost one, there are a total of uh, 18 electrons in the third energy level. So I'm going to make a chart uh, listing the energy level against the number of electrons. And let's see if we can see a general trend. And do you see a pattern? In the first energy level, we can put two, second eight, third 18, fourth 32. So as the energy level increases, we can put more and more electrons in. And in fact, we can even use a formula to predict the number of electrons that can fit into a shell. The formula is 2n squared. So, for example, let's say the maximum number of electrons that can fit into the fourth energy level, uh, we want to calculate that. How many electrons can we put into the fourth energy level? Well, we use our formula. N is going to be the energy level. We're interested in the fourth energy level. So it's going to be 2n squared or 2 to the fourth squared. 4 squared is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. We can put 32 electrons into the fourth energy level. Now within energy levels are sublevels. And the sublevels are labeled S, P, D, and F. You need to memorize these four sublevels. So here's a chart listing the sublevels that are inside the energy levels. First has an S sublevel. Second energy level has an S and P sublevel. 
Third energy level has S, P, and D. Fourth energy level has S, P, D, and F. You notice that the number of sublevels in an energy level is equal to the number of the energy level. First energy level has one sublevel. Two has second energy level has two sublevels. Third energy level has three sublevels, and so on. It's kind of like the floors of a maybe an inverted pyramid. And on the first floor you have you know one room, and second floor you have two apartments, and the third floor you have three apartments, uh, and so on. So. I want to draw a picture of this, and the way we're going to draw the picture is we're going to take our initial picture of the atom with the nucleus and just with the energy levels, and what we're going to do is I'm just going to draw this section of our model of the atom, and we're going to look and see what's inside each of these black bands. We're going to see what's inside each of these energy levels. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I'm just going to draw this little section right here. Okay, so the first energy level right here, looking at it close up, is this energy level right here. Okay, so here's the nucleus. Here's the first energy level. Here's the second energy level, here's the third energy level, and here's the fourth energy level. So the first energy level has one sublevel, S. The second energy level has two sublevels, S and P. The third energy level has three sublevels, S, P, and D. And the fourth energy level has S, P, D, and F. Just like that little chart we drew, you know, N and then. So. You need to memorize this. So the first energy level has an S. The second energy level has S and P. Third energy level has S, P, and D. And fourth energy level has S, P, D, and F. Just like the previous uh, paper I showed you. All right. So energy levels one, two, three, and four have sublevels inside of them: S, S, P, S, P, D, S, P, D, and F. Now, inside the sublevel, there are orbitals. All right, so we've gone from energy levels to sublevels, and now inside the sublevel are orbitals. So, this is the final location where electrons reside, and each sublevel has a certain number of orbitals. All right, so the sublevel S has one orbital, sublevel P has three, sublevel D has five, and sublevel F has seven and we can put a maximum of two electrons uh, inside each orbital. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you what's inside each of these bands. So we're sort of zooming in. Before we showed what was inside the energy levels. So these are what's inside the energy levels. And now we're going to look and see what's inside the sublevels. Okay. So inside the sublevel, you're going to see orbitals. And this is what's inside the sublevels. All right, once again, here's the first energy level. Here's the sublevel inside of it. Here's the second energy level. Here are the sublevels inside. Here's the third energy level. Here are the sublevels inside. And then here's the fourth energy level. Here are the sublevels inside. And then each of these sublevels has orbitals in it. Previously, we had shown you that the number of orbitals, these little oval things, is based on this chart. So remember S has one sublevel, I'm sorry, one orbital, and then P has three orbitals. Well, take a look at this. S has one, P has three, all right? And then D has five, five little ovals, and then F has seven ovals. And this is the final location of where the electrons go. So we can put the electrons in the orbital. So I'm going to put dots right here. So these dots represent the electrons. And notice that I'm only putting two dots in each oval. Why? Because a maximum of two electrons can occupy an orbital. That's why. So you can only put a maximum of two dots or two electrons in each orbital. Now, we're going to talk about something called the Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, when electrons occupy orbitals, they spin on their axis. So electrons spin. If two electrons occupy an orbital, they must spin in opposite directions. This is the Pauli exclusion principle. So 
when the electrons occupy the orbitals, if these little dots represent electrons, one electron would have to spin in one direction, and the other electron would have to spin in the other direction. That's just a rule. <laughs> Now instead of drawing dots to represent electrons, uh, we'll be using arrows to symbolize uh, spinning electrons. So an arrow pointing up is an electron that's spinning in one direction, and an arrow pointing down is an electron spinning in another direction. So on a future lecture, um, the way we would show where the electrons are going is, if I draw an arrow pointing straight up, that represents an electron uh, spinning in one direction. And if I draw an arrow pointing down, that represents an electron spinning in another direction. So we use arrows instead of dots to represent electrons. And the up and down orientation just indicates uh, that they're spinning in different directions. All right, so let's sort of uh, summarize. Electrons orbit the nucleus in circles called energy levels. So that would be like if this was the nucleus, here are the energy levels. And then inside the energy levels are sublevels, S, P, D, and F. Inside the sublevels are orbitals. So it goes from energy level, and then inside the energy level are sublevels, and then inside the sublevels are orbitals. You need to memorize these charts. If you don't have these memorized, you're not going to understand the next lecture. So memorize the number of the uh, sublevels that are inside each of the energy levels. This is from previous part of today's lecture. And then also memorize this chart, the number of orbitals in each sublevel. So you should memorize it. S has 1, P has 3, D has 5, and F has 7. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 21, energy levels, energy sublevels, orbitals, and the Pauli exclusion principle.